host of Praparna. I am an Ayurvedic psychotherapist. I am your emotional healing synergist. I am an infopreneur, medical writer and a budding beauty. So, on my pursuit to address, promote and propagate Ayurveda and psychotherapy globally, I come up with discussions every week on Ayurveda, psychotherapy, mental health and related aspects. So, uh, in this discourse, today's topic of discussion, as you can see in my background, it is emotional freedom versus emotional wisdom. So, we had discussed on both emotional freedom and emotional wisdom in our previous, uh, you know, sessions. So, if you want, you can refer to the previous sessions. So, here, emotional freedom and emotional wisdom both deals with deal with our emotions and others emotions so how is it uh, you know similar and how is it different and how is it so um, and the, the one more thing is how is it useful in our daily life how does it impact our daily life that is important uh, for you uh, you know for all of us that how does it impact our daily life so uh, without wasting time, you know, let's get started. So, emotional, see, when it comes to emotional freedom and emotional wisdom, these are two concepts related to managing, understanding our emotions, but they have distinct meanings, you know. Uh, they are different from each other, but they are connected to each other. See, emotional freedom here refers to the ability to express, process and experience emotions without being constrained or controlled by them. Without being in the control of emotions, you being able to express your emotions, process your emotions, experience your emotions. That means you being in your control control your emotions being in your control rather than you being in the control of your emotions that is emotional freedom that is means that means the ability to express or for example the ability to say no to something which you do not agree or uh, you have to set a boundary for something that is emotional freedom this is just a vague random example but that's emotional freedom. See, what emotional freedom involves is acknowledging, accepting our emotions without judgment. Do uh, not judging or criticizing our own emotions. Just taking the responsibility, taking accountability of our emotions and allowing ourselves to feel and express them in a healthy and authentic way. This is emotional freedom. So, emotional freedom encourages us to let go of the emotional baggage. So, you judge yourself that, uh, you know, uh, constantly here we can say that women are judged uh, not to voice out their opinions or uh, not to speak, to speak in a certain way to, you know, uh, physically also they have, they, they, have, they, have, they have been judged and they are being in constantly they have been speculated of but here we are talking about emotions emotions as well they can't express their emotions people are said that you know don't express your emotions uh, hold your emotions so emotional freedom you know encourages us to let go of all the emotional baggage past traumas negative patterns leading to a sense of liberation and a more positive state so See, emotional freedom, uh, I will repeat once again, is the ability to express, process and experience emotions without being constrained or controlled by them. Emotional freedom only is, you know, uh, for, uh, for our emotions. It is not for others. Being accountable of our emotions, wherein emotional wisdom differs. Okay, I'll let you know in the session. 
and you know uh, as i said you don't emotional freedom encourages us to let go of our emotional baggage past traumas negative patterns leading to a sense of liberation and a more positive emotional state and what is emotional wisdom see this is emotional freedom and emotional freedom is only and only for our emotions one's emotion but here emotional wisdom and emotional intelligence is you know is uh, you know pertaining to all our and uh, analyzing our emotions and analyzing others emotions that is emotional wisdom that is the basic difference see emotional wisdom pertains to the skill of recognizing understanding and effectively managing our emotions and the emotions of others to recognize to understand and effectively manage our emotions and the emotions of others it involves being able to navigate complex emotional situations with empathy patience and insight uh you know a vague example is to uh, do not react to a stimulus respond to the stimulus take time and respond to the stimulus responding to the stimulus see emotional wisdom goes beyond just experiencing emotions when you become self aware of your emotions that is emotional freedom but here in emotional wisdom it just goes beyond experiencing emotions it involves a deeper understanding of the underlying causes triggers and potential outcomes of these emotions it also encompasses you know making choices that align with our values and long term well being rather than impulsively reacting to emotions see uh, i'll repeat once again emotional wisdom goes beyond just experiencing emotions it involves a deeper understanding of the underlying causes why the i reacted in a way i reacted so if you want to know more about emotional intelligence emotional wisdom and emotional metamorphosis all the sessions of of the of all the videos and the, of the sessions are available in my youtube channel and linkedin as well you can go and search and you will find videos on all of them to know you know better because this is i am discussing only the difference today i am not discussing it deeper so it involves a deeper understanding of the underlying causes triggers what triggers your reaction you know knowing everything what are the potential outcomes of those emotions it encourages you know encompassing and uh, and encompasses making choices that align with our values see emotional wisdom you know <coughs> always aligns with our values and it is for the long term well being emotional freedom is getting rid of your you know uh, the baggage of your emotions it might not be for the long term but the practice will uh, will also help in long term well being but this emotional wisdom is for long term well being rather than impulsively reacting to emotions so in essence emotional freedom focuses on the liberation from emotional constraints while emotional wisdom emphasizes the skillful management and understanding of emotions for personal growth and healthier relationships emotional freedom focuses on the liberation from emotional constraints why emotional wisdom emphasizes on the skillful management and understanding of emotions for personal growth and healthier relationships see um liberating emotions is different from skillful management and understanding of your emotions and others emotions so for personal growth and healthier relationships so here um i in my earlier session in emotional on emotional freedom i had discussed briefly on a book called emotional freedom that is by dr judith orlock i couldn't give a comprehensive review of it like you know so i just uh, people asked me to you know give a 
a full book review so that it could be helpful for them uh, for uh, you know uh, reading as well and to know what is in the book what are the concepts that the book covers so this emotional freedom book you know uh, is a comprehensive guide that delves into various aspects of emotional well being and offers practical stat strategies to you know achieve a state of emotional freedom so the practical you can uh, uh, find some practical strategies to achieve the state of emotional freedom so here emotional freedom is a, a state the book explores how to manage emotions effectively cultivate resilience and lead more fulfilling life how to lead fulfilling life let's you know um, this books this book uh, helps us to know about the uh, you know emotions effectively and how to cultivate resilience and overall to lead a more fulfilling life so what does this book cover so four types of emotional freedom see here dr orloff introduces four categories of emotional freedom one is physical emotional freedom one is emotional emotional freedom one is mental emotional freedom and fourth one is spiritual emotional freedom so these categories you know encompass different dimensions of our life and offer a holistic approach to emotional well being and second chapter tells about the understanding energy the book highlights on the importance of understanding what is emotional energy and how does it impact our thoughts feelings and behaviors mind is all about thoughts feelings and behaviors dr orlov explains the concept of energy vampires people who drain our emotional energy and provide strategies to protect oneself from such negativity so this book is a good read actually tools for emotional freedom throughout you know the book the author presents a range of practical tools and techniques to help readers manage their emotions what does these include mindfulness meditation deep breathing exercises visualization technique so every technique is mentioned in detail and uh, you know um, it is made you know easily accessible to those who are new to these practices as well so intuition and empathy dr orlov explores the connection between the emotional freedom and intuition so she discusses how tuning into our intuition can help us make better decisions and navigate complex emotional situations this book also covers strategies to manage empathy especially for individuals who tend to absorb others emotions so and next is managing fear and anxiety this book also addresses fear and anxiety the book provides strategies to confront and overcome these emotions dr orloff discusses the role of fear in our lives and how to differentiate between healthy fear and irrational fears that hold us back so embracing positive emotions while focusing on challenging emotions this book also emphasizes the importance of embracing positive emotions so dr orloff discusses the power of uh, you know joy love and gratitude in promoting emotional well being so um setting boundaries this is also important an important aspect of emotional freedom is setting healthy boundaries in relationships uh, the book guides readers on how to establish and maintain boundaries to protect their emotional well being releasing and it also discusses on releasing negative patterns dr orloff explores how to identify and release negative emotional patterns that may be hindering personal growth you know this involves examining past experiences and trauma and learning to let go of emotional baggage so releasing negative patterns the connection between mind and body this book also you know discusses on mind body connection how is it connected and how emotional stress can impact physical health 
Dr. Orloff discusses the role of emotions in illness and provides insights into how managing emotions can positively influence overall health. So, uh, yesterday I was reading a line that even the science, you know, has improved so much. There's nothing called as mind transplant. Or, you know, you can't transform, uh, you know, you can't uh, transplant your... Uh, even though brain can be transplanted, your emotional, emotional intelligence, emotional wisdom cannot be transplanted or mind itself cannot be transplanted. So, uh, the thing is, we, uh, we can only uh, change, transform our, uh, transform us, uh, you know, internally, external transformation like the liver transplant, kidney transplant, all these transplants cannot be done to mind. So, whatever transformation is through emotions. So, emotional metamorphosis, emotional intelligence, you know, emotional wisdom or emotional freedom. Through these only we can, you know, transform our mind. There is no transplant here. There is only transform. So, um, the concept of resilience is a central theme in the book. So, this book provides guidelines for developing emotional resilience, bouncing back from setbacks and adapting positive positivity to life's challenges. Spiritual path to emotional freedom. This book also discusses on how spirituality can contribute to emotional freedom. So, uh, it discusses on the significance of connecting with a higher purpose, finding meaning in life and nurturing the spiritual dimension of well-being. So, it also discusses some of the uh, case studies. Throughout the book, Dr. Orloff includes real-life case studies that illustrate the examples and strategies discussed. These examples make the content relatable to help readers see how the principles can be applied in various situations. So, um, so there are some examples, uh, you know, which make the content relatable and help us readers to see how the principles can be applied in various, you know, situations. Overall, this Emotional Freedom is book is a comprehensive guide that provides readers with a wealth of insights and practical tools to achieve emotional well-being and lead a more fulfilling life, you know. Um, so, you can, uh, if you want to know more about Emotional Freedom, the concept, you can refer to my video or just go and read the book once. So that you will get more uh, idea about it. And now we are discussing the, after emotional freedom, we are discussing emotional wisdom also. Really. So here we will discuss, um, you know, how do we attain emotional wisdom? You know, um, we will discuss some of the um, strategies and techniques. See, emotional wisdom, as I said, refers to the ability to understand manage and navigate one's emotions effectively in various situations. If this is for self and others also. Here, it not only you analyze your feeling, your emotions, but also you analyze others' emotions. Because to build healthier relationships, whether it is in uh, personal setup or professional setup, it involves not only being aware of one's own feelings, but also having the capacity to recognize and empathize with the emotions of others. Emotional wisdom goes beyond mere emotional intelligence by encompassing a deeper level of insight, empathy and self-awareness. Um, so, what uh, this you know, emotional uh, wisdom is goes beyond emotional intelligence as well. How it gives is it you know helps you to get a deeper level of insight and self awareness and empathy towards others. You know, it involves making thoughtful and balanced decisions based on emotional understanding, which leads to a better interpersonal relationships personal growth and overall well-being. So, to attain and develop emotional wisdom, one can employ a range of strategies and techniques. Self-awareness. The foundation of emotional wisdom is self-awareness. 
So first we will start with self-awareness. Because the foundation of emotional wisdom is self-awareness. Take time to reflect on your emotions, thoughts and reactions. Just go home. Just sit if you have 10 15 minutes of time. Think what all happened in that day. How you reacted to a certain trigger. How, what, how, and what do you feel? Uh, you, did, you, um, did you feel that you could have done better? You could have saved the relationship? Or uh, you, you felt that you did better? So you can start noting all of those. If you, if you think that you had managed that day better or uh, the situation better, then you can uh, try, uh, you know, uh, to adapt those techniques in others as well. If not, you can, you, there is always a scope of improvement. So take time to reflect on your emotions, thoughts and reactions. Regularly check in with your yourself to understand why you feel the way you do. Why did you feel that way and how it might impact your actions? So, uh, how does it impact your actions? Mindfulness and meditation. Next technique is practicing mindfulness. Being mindful is when you are doing one thing, your concentration is fully on the same thing. If you are meditating, your concentration is on your breath. You don't have any distractive thoughts. So practicing mindfulness and meditation can help you stay present in the moment. Observe your emotions without judgment and respond rather than react impulsively. These practices cultivate a greater understanding of your emotional landscape. Empathy development. So working on developing empathy by actively listening to others. How do we develop empathy? By active listening and trying to understand others' perspectives as well and acknowledging their feelings. So empathy enhances emotional wisdom by allowing you to connect with others on a deeper level. So uh, and then emotional regulation. So uh, you have to learn to regulate your emotions. So learn techniques to regulate your emotions such as deep breathing, progressive muscle relaxation and there is a method called guided imagery, uh, you know, muscle relax relaxation. So these are visualization technique is also, uh, you know, beneficial. These techniques can help you manage intense emotions and prevent them from controlling your actions your impulsive reactions can be controlled by uh, you know uh, starting you know by emotional regulation so journaling i always say maintain a journal to record your thoughts feelings and experiences this practice helps you track patterns in your emotions and behaviors providing insights into your into your triggers and reactions that is called journaling and next is reflective practice. Regularly engage in self-reflection to analyze your emotional responses to different situations. Uh, you know, uh, self-reflecting is to different situations. Okay, in the office there was a situation like this. How did I respond to this? In At home there was a, um, you know, relationship uh, response or re reflecting on a response you responded to a spouse, to the sibling or to a family member or a friend, etc. So consider how you handled the past situations, what you learned and how you might approach similar scenarios in the future. As I already uh, mentioned, that when you write, you can just, you know, um, analyze your uh, being an unbiased, uh, you know, analyzer. You can analyze your uh, past actions in the different circumstances or different situations and what you learn from it. Uh, and uh, then in the future, how you would, uh, you know, uh, for the similar scenarios, what your response would be. And empower positive emotions so focus on nurturing positive emotions like gratitude joy and love these emotions can broaden your perspective and enhance your ability to think and act 
wisely in challenging circumstances. What this means is, every time we uh, we don't have gratitude for what we have, or we are not happy for what we have. We always trip for what we don't have. If we focus on nurturing this, uh, you know, form of gratitude, joy, and love for what we have, then you know. it will enhance uh, the ability to think and act wisely in challenging situations so seek feedback here constructive feedback be open to receiving feedback from others about how you handle your emotions you can ask your trusted group that how do you think i handle emotions if you want to really analyze and if you want to you know Uh, uh improve your emotional regulation perspective so constructive feedback can provide valuable here also people who you trust who can provide you only constructive feedback which will help you improve not because of jealousy giving some destructive uh, you know feedback constructive feedback on can provide valuable insights into areas where you can improve your emotional wisdom so conflict resolution skills c learn effective communication and conflict resolution techniques these uh, skills help you navigate disagreements in a constructive manner fostering emotional understanding and growth so conflict resolution skills is also important and people management skills all those skills you have you know n number of books for you know self help on these subjects and you have a number of you know sessions webinars going on for these um, you know concepts to actually improve to get to your, uh, these um, you know effective communication and conflict resolution techniques will actually help you to foster your emotional understanding and personal and professional growth learning from setbacks so embrace failures and setbacks as opportunities for growth analyze how your emotions influenced your decisions and what you can learn from these experiences instead of judging and criticizing yourself just analyze how your emotion influenced your decisions and what can you learn from these experiences cultivating resilience so strengthen your resilience by a developing positive outlook resilience is bouncing back if you have a setback um, you know the previous day just bounce back just cultivating that today yesterday was not a good day maybe today will be a good day just bouncing back so strengthen your resilience by developing a positive outlook and adapting to change so resilience enables you to bounce back from adversity and remain emotionally balanced so the next is practice empowerment so empower yourself empowerment is also very important empower yourself by making conscious choices making conscious choices that align with your values and long term goals see you have you have to choose your battles actually in the best example is um and let go of some things because with they do not align with your values and long time goals this sense of agency contributes to emotional wisdom by fostering a deeper understanding of your own own motivation your of your own motivation so lifelong learning approach emotional wisdom as an ongoing journey and learning growth so emotional wisdom is a lifetime journey so on um it is not a destination so read books or reading books attending workshops seeking guidance and professional help and uh, you know having mentors uh, to continue expanding your emotional understanding so emotional wisdom is a dynamic skill so that evolves over time for you and me both through consistent effort and self reflection so by combining self awareness empathy effective communication and commitment to personal growth individuals enhance their ability to navigate emotions wisely and lead more fulfilling lives so we have to uh, you know uh, consistently put efforts you know in uh, and self reflect 
by self awareness by empathy by effective communication and our commitment to personal growth and professional growth that is setting realistic goals everything you know all these together will enhance the ability to navigate our emotions wisely and lead more fulfilling life so uh this is uh, about emotional you know the difference between emotional freedom and emotional wisdom and uh, what is its significance and uh, that's it for today thanks for staying tuned and namaste